one of the reasons that we wanted to have you on is to talk about your path of being this guy who raises the flag first and in the face of dogmatic science that wants to poo-poo everything that you're talking about, yet you've been a stalwart in standing your ground and showing the evidence to tell the story that we may all be wrong on our humanity origin story and what that might mean for humanity moving forward and how we might be able to use that. And we'll get into that shortly, but let's sum this up for some folks. And you stop me if I make any errors here, but there is conclusive evidence of a mass extinction event which took out half of the megafauna, which are the large animals of the Earth, about twelve to 13,000 years ago, with animals literally being killed with undigested food in their stomachs. And then this evidence coincides with other evidence of a high heat, high energy atmospheric event, which happened globally across the planet which then also coincides with other evidence of a dramatic climate change in Earth's atmosphere, which melted thousands of trillions of tons of water from numerous ice caps and ended the ice age called the Younger Dryas, which then, of course, and this is supported by evidence, caused mass flooding events, both globally and domestically, which then resulted in a 400-foot or so rise in sea levels. And by the way, uh, <laughs> point to me one religion which doesn't speak of great floods in their storytelling. Right. Um, but this hundreds of feet in sea rise would certainly most definitely have covered any coastal population centers by hundreds of miles of ocean, which would have then been, you know, a tsunami, which would have been traveling at thousands of miles per hour, potentially, uh, depending on if we had a celestial event that uh, dropped a comet on us that would pulverize any existing civilization evidence, which, by the way, all this coincides with Plato's dating of the sinking of an advanced technology population called Atlantis. And so all of this evidence suggests that we as a civilization may have to rewrite our entire origin story for humanity because our human brains have been about the same size for 150,000 to 200,000 years, and so there may indeed have been an advanced human civilization that was wiped out by some celestial bodies smacking into the Earth, which could easily explain all the mounting evidence that something happened a little over 10,000 years ago that almost wiped out all life on the planet, including humans, after which the folks who survived the event eventually crawled out of the desert and created the bidet, which is, I think, the single largest awesome invention <laughs> of humanity to be able to spray water on our butts and take the poop off without toilet paper. Have I, how am I doing so far? You're pretty close there, Sean, but uh, <laughs> one thing we need to clarify after you're talking about wet butts is that it's pronounced younger dry ass, not younger dry ass. <laughs> okay. We don't necessarily have to go into the speculation that, uh, the Athenians that kicked the Atlanteans' ass were uh, potentially aliens, and maybe they influenced the comets into the Earth to sink Atlantis. Who knows what could be going on there? But uh, how's how's that for a good summation? Uh, you were pretty right on for a lot of it. I mean, obviously, we need to clarify some things. You know, 400-foot sea level rise, but it was not instantaneous. It was essentially spread out over about five or 6,000 years. Although within that span of time, I think we can identify three specific pulses of sea level rise. In fact, the first sea level pulse of sea level rise appears to have now is dated at about 14,600 years ago. The second one at about 12,900, which coincides with the, with the onset of the Younger Dryas and the uh, the main pulse of mass extinction of the megafauna. And you were okay. right about that. There was about half of all the species on earth, the way more than 44 kilograms, which is about a hundred pounds in body weight did go extinct. Most of that extinction uh, occurred right around 12,900, 12,800 to 12,900 years ago, which is what in geological terms would be called the uh, balling Road younger driest transition. <clears throat> the Balling Aller Road was two climate stages where uh, the planet began to sort of a natural gradual warming uh, near the end of the ice age. And then at 12,900 years ago, there was a sudden event that reversed uh, 2,000 to 3,000 years of, of gradual warming and shot the planet back into about a 1,300 year cold snap 
that then rapidly ameliorated around 11,600 years ago, which is the date that coincides with Plato's date uh, as given in his two dialogues, Timaeus and Critias, when he talks about the destruction of the Atlantean civilization 9,000 years prior to Solon's exile into Egypt, which is dated about 600 BC. So if you do the math on that, you'll come up with about 11,600. And that is the date now that's given for the onset of the Holocene epoch, which is the one that we find ourselves in at present, which is the post-glacial epoch. And essentially what what happened was that uh, between 11,600 and about 12,900 is the planet went through a whole series of convulsive changes that completely altered the global landscape. And what came out of that was a very different world. And that's the world that we have inhabited. Now, all this evidence has been accumulating. And as we increase our technology, it only sharpens the picture that, you know, this is going to be correct and probably, um, accepted science pretty soon, even though you've had a, a large number of detractors try to step up and say, no, 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 it all happened gradually, you know, all these changes, the extinction event, and, you know, all the killing of the mammoths happened when uh, the the hunter-gatherers came across and, and killed them all for absolutely no reason, etc. But you you were the original person who put all this together and started this theory a long time ago, and... The whole time you've had to stand firm in your understanding, your belief, your vision of how all this comes together, and you've had to kind of resist the existing dogmatic science that said that would try to dismiss it the whole time. Is that correct? It's close. Um, you know, I it's really you know, so much of what I was doing in the early days was in total obscurity. So nobody knew I was doing this research other than small groups. I, I mean, I started giving classes and lectures on this in the early 1980s. And it was during, you know, you know, I got into this, this path really pretty much heavily in the 1970s after spending a lot of time backpacking and camping and hiking in the various in in western states and becoming really obsessively interested in in geology but um you know and and then i was also interested in a lot of things you know just i i've always been that way i've been very interested in in a diverse array of things i've always been obsessively curious about the world that we live in and so you know i was interested in in you know ancient history um and a lot of these things began to really come together in the 80s and the 90s but, you know, because I was laboring in obscurity, I wasn't really attacked too much until I really started coming public with this stuff maybe 10 years ago. But, you know, I don't really think that I've been unfairly treated. I mean, the way science works is it's like, you know, you propose a, a, uh, a radical theory, you're going to expect that, that you're going to get attacked. And, and you got you to gotta go through the, through the whole process. And when the dust settles, you see who's the last man standing. And I try to vet everything uh, that I get into. You know, I, I regularly, I mean, other people very, you know, watch television or, you know, attend sports events. I basically study scientific literature because that's what turns me on. Um, <laughs> You're a sick man. I am. I'm, I'm, I'm tr- truly disgusting. Demented. <laughs> disgusting, demented, deranged. Let's <laughs> that. You're in your company. Shit. 